hello viewers welcome to my channel today in this video we will uh, see into propagation methods of dendrobium orchids basically this method can be applied to both hybrid dendrobiums and species dendrobiums as well but you will see in the later part of the video that species uh, dendrobium orchids uh, actually do not need this technique they can propagate by themselves and in multiples so we will basically focus on a very easy method to propagate dendrobium orchids which is very very easy everyone can do uh, this technique this method and they can propagate their uh, dendrobium orchids basically the hybrid dendrobium orchids so basically when your dendrobium orchid is uh, quite fewer years old say five years to six years uh, you will have old canes which have already bloomed uh, this kind of canes which have do not have any leaves just the canes are remaining they have already bloomed and they are providing food to the uh, orchid so what you can do is these are extra canes because you will see there are more than uh, six to seven canes on the dendrobium orchid so you take one of the canes uh, and just cut it at the base then you will see you must have noticed that dendrobium canes have these nodes at uh, uh, different uh, levels so we have to uh, make pieces of the dendrobium orchid in between two nodes do not cut at the nodes because these nodes are the points where new kikis new plantlets will develop do not make the pieces very short or otherwise uh, your there are chances that one or two pieces may rot and you may not get the plantlet so the cutting of dendrobium canes are done and uh, in this way you can take a uh, leftover box which may be lying around in your house you I'm sure you may have this kind of boxes empty boxes so what you should do uh, place a very thin layer of sphagnum moss at the bottom and uh, nicely moist it with water do not over uh, water it just make it moist and place the pieces of the dendrobium cane on top of the sphagnum moss so the basic idea is that the sphagnum moss, wet sphagnum moss will provide humidity to the cane pieces and it will help to uh, produce new uh, plantlets. In case of species dendrobium orchids, as I was saying, you will not need this technique because after the bloom period is over, after the winter season, you will have this kind of small key is growing at the nodes of the uh, canes the this is uh, the dendrobium fimbriatum where you can see one small very tiny key, key forming the roots have already formed the roots are quite long as compared to the key, key. this key, key will elongate and become one big matured plant uh, one day one uh, after, uh, maybe after in the next uh, uh, cycle say after nine to ten months so the roots are uh, longer as compared to the key, key. eventually when the key, key uh, becomes at least uh, uh, say seven centimeters or eight centimeters you can remove the key, key from the mother plant or if you wish to keep the kiki with the mother plant it's absolutely fine it will make your mother plant bushier and you will have large number of blooms on the mother plant it will become longer and uh, after eight to nine months it will fully mature and will be ready for blooming so when if you want to remove the kiki from the mother plant wait till a very nice root system forms and the kiki is about seven to eight centimeters then you can remove it just cut it at the uh, mother plant part where the kiki is attached and then you can plant it separately in a pot or you can if you have a, a tree in your yard then you can mount that 
kiki on to the plant i basically dump all my old canes from the dendrobium orchids into this basket which uh, you may call it as the kiki bed uh, there was a layer of uh, sphagnum moss at the bottom and i have not added any new sphagnum moss i just keep dumping all the canes old canes which have already bloomed in this basket and they keep producing the kikis you can see there are multiple kikis that have been growing and every uh, blooming cycle every growing season new uh, kikis are produced and they form very nice root system i do not remove any kiki from this basket they keep growing and uh, uh, after few years this basket will be full of uh, long uh, canes like this uh, uh, soft cane dendrobiums these are there are two species in this basket one is the dendrobium phylum and one is the dendrobium fimbriatum so one is uh, yellow colored the fimbriatum and the phylum is uh, a combination of uh, white and uh, mauve colored lips so it will look very nice when it becomes fully Uh, bushy with all the kiki is growing fully matured and then blooming if you remove the kiki from the mother plant you can plant it in this way in a pot with uh, big bark chips i have planted it with big bark chips so that the roots can breathe and they can grow they get space to grow and you can plant multiple kikis together here i have planted three uh, i'm i think three uh, kikis are there i have planted them together so they will uh, be bushy once they grow once they fully mature and they can produce new blooms i have this tree in my yard in my garden which where i have uh, uh, mounted multiple varieties of orchids this is the dendrobium nobili kikis which you can you have must have seen in one of my videos it has after mounting on this tree it has produced two new kikis which are growing nicely the roots as you can see are very nicely attached to the tree the bark is quite rough and it it's a very uh, good uh, tree good uh, choice for mounting your orchids the roots you can see it has attached to the tree this is the fimbriatum kiki one of the kikis singly i have mounted it on this tree and this is the rincostylis retusa which you must have seen in one of my videos uh so this is one method if you have a tree you can mount it on uh, mount the orchids on that tree very nicely attached uh i have quite a few uh, trees on my backyard i have quite a, a big space so there is uh, there are several uh, big trees planted which have grown and uh actually in my place we uh, grow orchids in this way basically everyone who has orchids in their uh, garden uh, mount them on trees especially the betel nut trees which is uh, uh, which grows very uh, commonly in our area and also coconut trees are a good candidate but uh, what happens is sometimes if it's if it rains heavily the uh, orchid just may come off from the bark so we usually plant orchids on betel nut trees uh, where orchids get a good rough surface for the roots to attach themselves so hope you like the video thank you for watching apart from these two methods uh, dendrobium orchids can also be propagated that is you can create multiple copies of the same dendrobium orchid by division now what is division division is as we know that the dendrobium canes arise from one single rhizome that is the base of the orchid from where you can see multiple canes arising so what you can do to multiply your orchid is that the rhizome which is the base you can give a cut in that rhizome without damaging the canes so how uh, you should divide the rhizome so basically for a dendrobium orchid to survive properly and to bloom you need at least 3 canes uh, though it is necessary uh, for uh, dendrobium orchids to survive uh, and to have 3 canes you should at least take for safety purpose you should take 4 uh, canes when you have multiple canes 
in your dendrobium orchids and you see your orchid is becoming heavier so you can divide your orchid and uh, take three or four canes minimum and then uh, make a clean cut in the rhizome and then try to separate without damaging the roots and then you will have uh, two copies uh, two plants from the same orchid in this way also you can propagate your dendrobium orchids now uh, if you have too many canes you can make three copies also so that is up to your choice those were the three propagation techniques of dendrobium orchids please give them a try i am sure you will be successful and hope the video was helpful for you until next video thank you for watching please give it a like and do subscribe to my channel Thank you.